Hey Cake Chums and Mini Chums and welcome back to the Mr Baker's Cakes Kitchen and another episode of Mr Baker's Cake School. What's that you say? Well yes I am wearing my brand new merch. Thank you so much for noticing. In fact I have just released 10 brand new designs over at the Mr Baker's Cakes apparel website. So if you fancy picking up some new cake or baking themed garments, t-shirts, they're all t-shirts, if you fancy picking up a brand new cake or baking themed t-shirt then head down to the description box below and you will find the link that you need. But that's not why we're here today, we're here to learn how to bake. And in fact today's recipe has probably been the most requested recipe that I have had over the last 14 weeks. Every single time I've uploaded a post saying what would you guys like to learn next, you can guarantee that somebody has asked if we can do a cheesecake. Now not to be a baking snob, I like cheesecake as much as the next person, but I think when most people think of cheesecake, they think of no-bake cheesecake, which is the one where you just kind of assemble all the ingredients together and put it in the fridge to set. And as I say, they're perfectly delicious, I really like them, but it's not baking. So if we're going to do cheesecake, and I'm quite happy to do cheesecake, but if we're going to do cheesecake, it's going to be a baked cheesecake. And so, in this week's episode of Mr. Baker's Cake School, we're going to be making baked lemon cheesecake. Let's get to the video. Now just before we get started, I do have some news. I hate to say it guys, but unfortunately this is going to be the last episode of Mr. Baker's Cake School here on my YouTube channel. It has been really tough to decide when to kind of wrap things up and move on as the country starts to come out of lockdown. And to be honest with you, I'm still very much staying at home other than when I'm going to school. But I've been very aware from looking at kind of the, the stats on the videos and the number of people that are watching that possibly the novelty's wearing off of baking at home during lockdown, which I can understand if you are not a passionate baker. That being said, keep your eye on my social media channels because I will have a very big announcement coming soon. Let's just say, although Mr. Baker's Cake School might be wrapping up, there might be something else in the works. Did we all just hear the wind make that weird noise? Anyway, I, I can't really talk about anything yet um, until T's are crossed and I's are dotted on contracts. But yes, um, stay tuned for a really exciting announcement in the next couple of weeks. Cooking slash baking along with Mr. Baker isn't over. It might just be moving. I've already said too much. So anyway, yes, today we are going to be making a baked lemon cheesecake. In all honesty, a baked cheesecake is so, so easy to make. They can just be a little bit fussy or temperamental in the oven. But to be honest, if you're just making one for you to enjoy at home, I don't think that's really a problem. So I think let's just get into it and have a go. So it's time as always to go and wash your hands, pop on an apron and let's get baking. As always, I'm going to start today's video by going through all of the ingredients that you will need to make your own baked lemon cheesecake. First up, you are going to need 225 grams of digestive biscuits. Now these are just short bought box standard biscuits. You could also use ginger biscuits, they work really nicely in this cheesecake as well, but we're keeping things simple with digestive today. You will also need 100 grams of butter and I've melted mine in the microwave just for about 20 seconds. And as always, I'm using slightly salted butter, but you can use whatever you prefer. You are going to need 250 grams of mascarpone cheese. If you haven't used mascarpone cheese before, it's a really delicious, soft, full fat cheese that is absolutely perfect for baking with. You are going to need 600 grams of full fat soft cheese. I'm using Philadelphia soft cheese, although other brands are available, but you must make sure it is full fat. If you go for one of the lighter versions, they will contain too much water and your cheesecake won't bake properly. So yes, 600 grams of full fat soft cheese. You are going to need two whole eggs plus the yolks of two more, the zest of three lemons and the juice of one, four tablespoons of plain flour and 175 grams of caster sugar. 
Now, to help you remember those ingredients, you can, of course, screenshot the image right next to me right now, or if you scroll down to the video description underneath this video, you will find that I have put a full typed out list of the ingredients there as well. It's been mentioned to me by a couple of people in the real world that they forget to write them down, and then when it comes to actually adding them in, they forget what quantities they need. So don't panic, they are always down in the video description, so if you ever are baking along with the video, and you get to a certain point and think, oh, I've forgotten how much I need, you can just pause, scroll down to the description, and the entire ingredient list is typed up down there. Okay, so before we get started, the first thing I'd like you to do is preheat your oven to 160 degrees fan, or 180 degrees. This is actually a relatively quick recipe to put together. So by the time we have all of our ingredients ready and our cheesecake is assembled, you should find that your oven has come to temperature. The next thing you need to do is grab a spring form cake tin. Now spring form means that it has a latch on the side that when you undo it, it loosens the sides and the bottom will come out. Now I'm using a nine inch or a 23 centimeter tin. If you only have access to a slightly smaller or a slightly bigger one, then give me a shout down in the comments and I'll see if I can help you with scaling the recipe up or down. Now as I say, baked cheesecake can be quite temperamental, so we're going to be as kind to it as we can. And one of the ways we're going to do that is by making sure we prepare our tin as carefully as we can. To prepare our tin, we're going to coat the insides with butter and then line it with greaseproof paper. Make sure you prepare the paper first, otherwise it will get messy. Begin by taking some greaseproof paper, taking the base of your tin and drawing around it with a normal pencil. Now ideally you want to do this on the reverse of the paper, but don't panic too much because graphite in pencils is non-toxic. That doesn't mean of course we want to eat it, so do try and remember to draw on the back if you can. Which I wasn't doing. Then take a pair of scissors and cut out your circle. Now one of the ways that I find baked cheesecake can be temperamental is that sometimes it will want to stick to the sides of the tin and as it cools down and contracts slightly, that can cause it to crack. They do like to try and crack. So another way that you can prevent that is by lining the sides with greaseproof paper as well. That is very much an optional step though. To do that, I'm just going to cut a couple of strips of my greaseproof paper. And I'll use those to go around the sides. Next, reassemble your tin. And then using one of your discarded pieces of greaseproof paper, take a little butter and just rub it all over the inside of that tin. And then finally, take your greaseproof paper and place it in the bottom and around the sides. Hopefully you should end up with something that looks a bit like this. We're gonna pop that aside for now and we'll start making our cheesecake. Okay, so the first element of the cheesecake we're going to make is the biscuit base. And to do that, you're going to need your digestive biscuits and your melted butter. Now we need to crush our biscuits up until they're down in crumbs. And you've got a couple of options here. If you have a food processor like my one here, then this is absolutely brilliant because it will do all the work for you. If you don't have one of these though, don't panic. You can also put your biscuits into a strong plastic bag and then use a rolling pin to beat them until they break up completely into breadcrumbs. That's actually a lot more fun than using a machine. But it does take a little bit longer. Today, I'm going to use my food processor just because it will make life a bit easier. If you do yours with a rolling pin, be sure to send me a picture of you bashing your biscuits. 
If you're using a food processor like I am, you can just tip your whole biscuits straight into the mixer, like that. And remember, that was 225 grams. So if you buy a 250 gram packet of biscuits, that usually means there's a couple left over for you to have a snack on. And then just going to pop the lid on and then turn this on on high speed until all those biscuits have been broken down into breadcrumbs. And you can see how quickly that happens. Next, I'm going to take the lid off and just pour in my melted butter. Remember that was 100 grams. And then the mixer goes back on until those are fully combined. Once that's done, grab your springform tin bag and you're just going to pour your biscuit mixture straight into the tin. Use your fingers to spread the mixture out so it covers the whole bottom and then you need something flat that you can use to squash that down. If you used your rolling pin to bash your biscuits, then of course you can use that flat end of the rolling pin if you have one. Another thing that works really well is just a glass, just a normal drinking glass, or I like to use the bottom of one of my measuring cups. And we're literally just, if I show you on this camera, pushing down to flatten that biscuit base. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing now. When you finish, you should end up with something that looks like this. Once again, we can now set that to size and it's time to prepare the next stage of our cheesecake. The next thing I'm going to do is prepare my lemons. And remember, we need the zest of three lemons and the juice of one. Now, when I'm zesting citrus fruit, I have a grater that looks like this and it's really useful because one of the lids that can go onto it has really, really fine grating holes, which are perfect for zesting. Now, I think I've got one of these in my Amazon shop. So if you head down to the video description below, you'll find a link to my Amazon store, and I think you can pick up one of these in there. Be aware it is an affiliate link, so I do earn a little commission on every purchase made. Anyway, so we need the zest of all of these lemons. So I like to start at one end, and we don't want to go too far into the lemon, otherwise we get that white bitter pith. So if you watch carefully, I literally will go one, two, and then I'll rotate slightly. One, two, rotate slightly. And I just keep doing that until I've removed all of that delicious zest off the lemon. And of course, when you finish zesting your lemons, don't forget we also need the juice of one of them as well. To do that, I like to place a fine mesh sieve over the top of a clean bowl, and then that would just stop any of those lemon seeds falling into the bowl while I'm squeezing out the juice. The last thing we need to get ready in advance are our eggs because you'll remember that we need two whole eggs and the yolks of two more. Now last week, I think my eggs were a little bit too old and that's going to be my excuse as to why I did such an appalling job of splitting them into their whites and their yolks. I'm confident that this week it's going to go so much better. So if you remember, I said last week, I like to start by breaking open that shell nice and neatly and I use a knife to do that. And then we open the egg over one of the bowls and then we just allow that egg white to pour out into the bowl, keeping the yolk contained in the shell. Just passing it from one side to the other. And then once we've got all the white in that bowl, we can pop the yolk in that one. See, I can do it really. Do exactly the same again. Carefully break the shell in half, and allow the white to go into the one bowl, there are other ways to do this as well. This is just the easiest way, in my opinion. And again, just like last week, we can pop these two egg whites to one side and use those for something else. 
Okay, and then we just need the whole egg of the other two eggs. So we can just crack that straight into the bowl. And then all our ingredients are ready. Now, we are going back to the big mixing bowl today, but for once, I'm going to use my electric hand whisk. We've not used this before in a video, and I know lots of you do have them at home. However, you can also do this with just a normal, regular whisk, or if you have one, one of these stand mixers with the whisk attachment. Now, to make your cheesecake, it's really as simple as just putting all of the remaining ingredients in your big bowl. So, we've got our eggs, so two whole eggs and two egg yolks. We've got lemon juice, lemon zest, lots and lots of lovely lemon zest. Do you know, I think lemon might be one of my absolute favorite flavors. We have got our 600 grams of cream cheese, our 250 grams of mascarpone cheese, 175 grams, I think, of caster sugar, and four tablespoons of plain flour. And then you just need to take your whisk or your sand mixer whisk attachment, or like me, your electric hand whisk, and we're simply going to mix these together. Top tip, start on a slow speed, otherwise you will end up wearing most of your mixture. When we're part way through like this, I like to take one of my flexible spatulas, and you've seen me use these loads of times, and just run that down the side of the bowl to make sure that we haven't got any mixture lurking around the sides that hasn't mixed in. And then we can go back in with our whisk. And just keep mixing it all together until we can't see any lumps at all. We want it to be lovely and smooth. Now it might be tempting to want to taste this, but do you remember we've got raw flour and raw egg in here, so I wouldn't advise it. Now if I hold this up, hopefully you can see what my mixture looks like. There are what looks like small lumps, but that's actually lemon zest, so don't worry about those. It's the bigger lumps of cream cheese that we were looking to break up. Once your mixture looks like this, you can get your spring form tin that you've lined and filled with that crumbled biscuit mixture. And we're just going to very carefully pour our mixture into that tin. And then when you've done that, you can use that same spatula to spread the mixture out over the whole biscuit base until you have a nice, even layer. Now it can be very easy to get air bubbles trapped inside or underneath your cheesecake mixture. So one thing I like to do, being very careful not to undo that clasp, is bash it on the workshop a couple of times just to force those air bubbles up to the surface. It's really rather loud. And you should hopefully end up with something that looks like this. Now to cook your cheesecake, this needs to go into your preheated oven for about 35 to 40 minutes. Now be aware, when it's cooked, it should still have a slight uniform wobble to it. So don't panic and think it's not quite ready yet. As I say, baked cheesecakes are fussy customers. And so one thing they really like to do is crack, either while they're cooking or while they're cooling down. Another way that I try and avoid this happening is I'll leave my cheesecake to cool in the oven. So after that 35 to 40 minutes, I'll turn the oven off and then I just crack the door open slightly and wedge a wooden spoon inside so that it opens it a little bit, but not too much. What that does is it means that the cheesecake will be cooling down at a more uniform temperature rather than the outside cooling down quickly and the inside cooling down slowly because that is the biggest cause of cracking on your cheesecake. So, as I say, after 35 to 40 minutes, if you just turn your oven off, open the door just to crack and pop something inside just to hold the door open slightly, and then leave it in there until it has completely cooled down, which will probably take a couple of hours. If it does crack, don't panic. And to be fair, mine might still crack as well. 
they are fussy, as I say. But if it does crack, don't panic, because I'm also going to show you a way that you can dress the top of your cheesecake that will make it look really smart and professional, and will hide any cracks. Anyway, I'm going to go and pop mine in the oven, and then I'm going to have a jolly good tidy up, and do all this washing up, because there is loads this week. And then I will see you in about two hours and 40 minutes, I reckon. Hopefully with a beautifully baked cheesecake. I'll see you then. A little longer than a few minutes later. We're in my, my other kitchen, my, my actual kitchen, and I thought I'd show you what my cheesecake looks like when it's, when it's baked. Um, so you can see what I mean by like a, a uniform wobble. So if I uh, turn the camera around, hopefully you can see that we've gone slightly golden on the top. If I give it a jiggle, it's kind of wobbling as one. There's no bit that's wobbling more than anything else. And that's what we mean by uniform wobble. So I'm going to turn the, the oven off. Yes, it is actually quarter to 10 at night. And then I've just grabbed the wooden spoon and I've wedged it in the door and that will just hold it open slightly and hopefully this will mean that the cheesecake will cool down really gradually and hopefully stop that dreaded crack happening. But we shall see. And if it does happen, as I say, I will show you what to do to hide it, so don't panic. One eternity later. And as always, through the magic of editing, there we go, there is my baked cheesecake. And after all that effort to chill it as slowly as possible, we have a crack. Can you see that? Do you think I can get away with pretending that I did it on purpose so that I can show you how to fill them in? No? It was worth a try. Okay, so next up we need to take it out of the tin and hopefully, because we've lined it really well, it should just be as simple as unpopping the clasp and lifting off those sides. And then we can carefully peel off Proof paper. Then we very carefully head underneath. I should be able to use my cake lifter to lift my cheesecake off the tin and place it onto a serving dish. One thing I particularly love about this recipe is that the ratio of butter to biscuit in the base means it stays nice and solid, it doesn't fall apart at all. As you can see from the fact that I was able to lift it and place it onto a serving dish. I find quite often cheesecake recipes don't get that balance quite right, which means you end up with a really crumbly base, but that's not the case for this one. To dress this cheesecake, one of the things I like to do is put a topping on it, and that is brilliant because it will hide that crack. On this particular cheesecake, we're actually going to use a sour cream topping. Now hear me out on this. I came across this combination on a recipe online and I was a bit skeptical, but actually it really works. I don't know, there's just something about the balance between the kind of the tangy sour cream and the sweet cheesecake that just is perfect together. So just using my offset spatula, I'm just going to place some sour cream onto the cheesecake, probably about half of this. And I'm just going to spread it around. Not being too neat, I don't want it to look like a, you know, a cake that I'm decorating. And you can see that that topping has perfectly hidden that crack as well. So it's dual purpose, it adds an extra flavour dimension and it also hides that imperfection. On top of that, I'm going to add some blueberries. Now, you don't have to use blueberries if you prefer. You could use raspberries or any other fruit that you really enjoy. I just really like the combination of blueberries and lemon. I think they work really well together. And you can kind of put on as many or as few as you want to. It's really up to you. And then last but not least, I've just placed some lemon curd into a piping bag and we're going to drizzle that over the top. So just snipping off a little corner. And I'm just gonna do this quite randomly. I'm not worrying about being too neat because I think with things like this, you don't want to be too neat because it looks really contrived. So just by having it kind of 
spilling down the sides, it just looks really inviting and delicious. Incidentally, you can of course use shop-bought lemon curd, but I'll also pop a link down in the video description to the lemon curd recipe that I use all the time. It really is delicious. But anyway, there you go guys, that is how to create a baked lemon cheesecake. I finally gave in to all the requests. Now, ideally, I would leave this in the fridge for a few more hours to chill down and set perfectly before serving, but you don't even want to know what time it is already, and I want to get this video up tomorrow. So, I'm gonna dig in and give it a bit of a try, and uh, we'll see what we think. Okay, so, I'm going to cut in over here. And what we're looking for is that crispy biscuit base. And then you can see that we've got this slice of cheesecake that's able to maintain its shape, but it's still got that warble going on. So it should be deliciously light and soft. That really is nice. And I have to say, it would be even better if it had had that chance to chill as well. I'd say there's still a little bit of warmth right in the middle there, but it's absolutely delicious. I do hope you enjoyed learning how to make a baked lemon cheesecake with me today. And of course, if you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up down below. I know I said that this would be the last episode of Mr. Baker's Cake School here on YouTube, at least for now, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be stopping uploading videos so if you haven't already subscribed to Mr. Baker's Cakes here on YouTube, you can do that now by clicking on the big red button down there on the right. For those of you who did discover my channel because of the cake school, then my normal content is usually a bit more diverse. So it's a bit of a mixture of baking, cake decorating, tutorials, having a go at challenges and projects, reviewing cake decorating tools and equipment, kind of you name it, it's a bit of a mishmash of everything. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in watching, then do make sure to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget, I will have some news coming up very soon about the future of my children's baking series. Again, must be careful not to give too much away. And because we are coming to the end of a long 14, technically 15 week adventure, because I skipped a week. Because we are coming to the end of a long 15 week adventure together, I have added a couple of extra designs to my merch store just for my mini chums. So I'll pop up a couple of images of the designs that I have created just for the graduates of Mr. Baker's Cake School here on YouTube. And if you fancy picking those up to remember our time together, then you can head to the link down in the description. But can I just say thank you to every single one of you who has watched the videos, who have baked along with the videos, who have sent me pictures of your creations, who have shared them with your friends, um, those of you who have baked for local NHS workers, baked for your neighbours, it really has been an incredible experience to, to share this adventure with you. And I'm not exaggerating when I say it's one of the things that has kept me going during this kind of really uncertain period. Seeing all of your amazing cakes and bakes and your smiling faces as you're creating them has just been an absolute joy. So thank you so, so much, every single one of you. And as I say, don't go anywhere. Please do continue to watch the videos and hopefully we can have lots more fun together. Oh, it's all getting a bit too soppy. I guess it's time to wrap this up. So once again, thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you at the same time next week. Take care.